Good morning, and welcome to the meeting of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. I'm Council Member Francisco Moy, the Chairperson of the Subcommittee. Uh, today we are joined by Council Members Grijencek, Lansman, and Rivera. If you are here to testify, please fill out a speaker slip with the Sergeant at Arms indicating your full name, the application name, uh, or LU number, and whether you are in favor or against the proposal. Uh, we will begin this meeting uh, with our hearings. Uh, we will now hear LU 640, 645, an application by Sean OG Enterprises, LLC. Uh, Sean OG's for a renewal of a revocable consent for an unenclosed sidewalk cafe located at 6002 Woodside Avenue in Queens in Council Member Van Bramer's district. Uh, the proposed sidewalk cafe would consist of 15 tables and 30 chairs. Uh, I now open the public hearing on this application. And we will call up the first panel. Pete Janicek and James O'Sullivan. You may begin. Morning. Morning. I'm uh, Please, Janicek. Please state your name and raise your right hand. Oh. You. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and you will answer all questions truthfully? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Hi, I'm Pete Janicek from SWA Architects. With me is uh, James Sullivan from the restaurant, Sean OG. Um, we're here today to request a renewal of uh, Sean OG Enterprises doing business at Sean OG's, an 11 year uh, old unenclosed sidewalk cafe with 15 tables and 30 chairs located at 6002 Woodside Avenue in Council Member Van Bramer's District in Queens. Uh, I just want to make sure that the committee is aware that the, uh, the, ca um, the restaurant's been around for 21 years. Uh, the cafe has been around for 11 years. The cafe has grandfathered status um, after the fact, a couple years ago, the city had installed various other items on the sidewalk, namely trees, um, bike rack, um, lamppost, and um, what's the other thing? The muni meter. And, and muni meters. Um, but the cafe is grandfathered from that. And like uh, we have uh, distributed to you like copies of the plans showing the original cafe, and we have added the uh, um, items that I just mentioned onto the uh, the plans just to show, but we just want to um, make sure that you are aware that this is a grandfathered status. Um, and also the, the, the bike rack uh, was removed. Uh, we also have like um, given the committee like uh, copies of petitions from people in the neighborhood and patrons supporting the application um, of this uh, cafe. Uh, in deference to the community board who brought up issue, the sidewalk cafe will willingly close, uh, actually open, not open, until 11 a.m. in the morning, which is uh, like three hours later than they would normally have been allowed to um, open up. Um, and if there's any questions, I mean, do you want to, and Sean, you wanna, I mean, if you want to, James, you want to add anything? I'd just like to say that we're a, a small business. We own two businesses in uh, Woodside, Queens, like, uh, my representative said uh, we've been there 21 years and um, we employ between 20 and 30 local people and right now we're finding business tough and we, this sidewalk cafe is a very important part of our business. Thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony today. Any questions? Okay, thank you. I'd like to call up the next panel, uh, Lisa Deller. Just push the button. No, it's okay, you could just push the oh. button. <laughs> yep. Oh, okay. Go. Uh, good morning. My name is uh, Lisa Deller, and I am the uh, chair of the Land Use Committee of Community Board 2. And our committee has been working on this application since December. 
In December, we were notified by the Department of Commu Consumer Affairs that there was uh, an application pending for renewal of a sidewalk cafe. Uh, we, we requested that the applicant come to our land use committee meeting, which we always do to discuss the renewal, um, and they did in December. And what we noted in December is there were um, a significant number of obstructions that weren't noted on their plan. And so there was now um, you know, a tree pit, a muni meter, which you can see there are some photographs in your package on the last page. Um, you can see the tree and the muni meter right adjacent to that. And, uh, and then further on down, there's a street light. But anyway, um, so there were these obstructions that uh, weren't noted at the time on the plan. They just said it was a renewal of existing condition. And so um, we asked them for a revised plan uh, to make the pedestrian walkway uh, wider between the cafe barrier and the tree pit and the muni meter. Um, and we asked them to come back to the land use meeting in January and they said they weren't ready to come back. And then we invited them to come in February and they said they had a family vacation. And in the meantime, at the end of February, we received from Department of Consumer Affairs the revocable consent approval of the application. And so, um, you know, with that, um, I am grateful for the council person for referring it um, to your committee because what we had asked them for is a revised plan, which we never saw. Um, what they did was uh, a week or so ago, they sent us a revision, which increased the number of tables and chairs and moved them to Woodside Avenue from 60th Street. And so our request is for them to come back to the Land Use Community, community Board so the community board can be in dialogue with them um, about you know, making that area as pedestrian friendly as they possibly can. So I think with that, um, do you have any questions? Thank you. I'd like to bring up uh, Laura uh, Brinbeck. Laura? Oh. Got it. Uh, are there any other uh, members of the public who wish to testify? Uh, seeing none, I now close the public hearing on this application uh, and it will be laid over, but I just want to say that I would recommend to the applicant uh, that you take the community board's uh, testimony and request here uh, seriously and commit to attending their next scheduled meeting. Now we will begin uh, with our votes, and I first want to note that LU uh, 626 and 628 and 629 is being laid over. Um, we will also vote to approve with modifications LUs uh, number 641, 642 for the 52nd Street rezoning proposal uh, related to property in Council Member Van Bramer's district in Queens. The, applica the application includes a zoning map amendment to change a R5B district to an R7A C23 district and a related zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing options one and two. These actions would facilitate the development of an eight-story mixed-use building with approximately 61 dwelling units, ground floor commercial space, and 33 residential and 13 commercial parking spaces. Our modification will be to move uh, MIH option two and retain option one. Council Member Van Bramer is in support of this proposal as modified. Today we will also vote to approve LU's number uh, 643 and 644 for the 90 Sand Street rezoning proposal relating to property in Council Member 
Levin's district in Brooklyn. Uh, the application includes a proposed zoning map amendment to change an MI and M16 district and an M16 R10 special mixed use district and a related zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing options one and two. These actions would facilitate the conversation of an existing 29-story building to accommodate approximately 305 supportive units and 202 affordable housing units. Council Member Levin is in support of this proposal. I now call to vote to approve LU 643-644 and to approve with modifications that I have described. And now, Council, if you, uh, I'm sorry, and LUs uh, 641 and 642. Um, Council, please call the roll. Chair Moya. Aye. Council Member Levin. Um, with congratulations to the applicant, uh, I'm very excited to be approving this, uh, this application. Um, 200, supportive, uh, 200 affordable housing units and 300 supportive housing units is, is, uh, will make a major impact on, um, on our fight to, uh, to address homelessness here in New York City and provide affordable housing uh, for the most vulnerable New Yorkers. And so I'm enthusiastically in support, and I vote aye on all. Councilmember Lanceman. Aye. Councilmember Reynoso. Aye. Councilmember Gordenchik. Aye. Councilmember Rivera. Aye. A vote of six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Uh, the items are approved. The vote will remain open. We will now hear a pre-considered LU item for the 50 Old Fulton Street rezoning proposal under the ULIP number uh, C190011 ZMK relating to property in Council Member Levin's district in Brooklyn. Uh, the applicant seeks approval of a zoning map amendment uh, to change an M21 to an M15 district to facilitate the construction of a five-story commercial office building. Uh, within property controlled by the applicant in the Fulton Ferry neighborhood. In addition to the applicant's property, the proposed rezoning would affect uh, the adjacent lot to the east and a small portion of the adjacent lot to the west. The rezoning would increase the maximum uh, FAR for commercial or industrial use from two to five and would allow greater flexibility uh, with regards to allowable retail uses. Uh, I now open the public hearing on this application. Um, and I will call up the first panel which is uh, Rachel Scow, <coughs> Nick, is it Nick Hawkers, Hawkins, Sorry. Uh, Tom Lieberman, and Chris Fogel. Please raise your right hand and state your name for the record. Do Nick you Hawkins. Swear or Rachel Scow. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and that you will answer all questions truthfully? Yes. yes. Thank you. My name is Tommy Lieberman. I'm one of the principals of All West Old Fulton LLC the applicant for the rezoning. I'm here today with my partner, Adam Westrach, our zoning attorneys and our architect. Adam and I own a pro up, uh, and operate seven buildings in Brooklyn. There are a mix of residential, commercial, and industrial buildings. <coughs> we have developed and renovated all of these buildings. <coughs> we are not mega developers that drop hundreds of units in one location, but instead are trying to build and blend into the neighborhood. We purchased 50 Old Fulton Street in November 2016 with the intention of developing the site for retail and office use. We're pursuing the rezoning because we know that we can develop something exciting at the site while still respecting the history of the neighborhood. We want people coming to the area and to say, what a nice neighborhood, instead of a lot of cars parked on the sidewalk. Just personally, <clears throat> I happen to like to walk through neighborhoods to get the flavor and the history of each neighborhood. And for years, 
about 25 years that I walked past here. I always wanted to be part of um, helping to improve this uh, site. And um, I'm happy to be able in the future to have an opportunity to do that. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Rachel Scull, and I'm an associate at Greenberg Traurig. We represent Old, All West Old Fulton LLC, the applicant seeking this rezoning um, of a portion of Block 202 in Brooklyn, um, right where Old Fulton Street um, meets the BQE and the Brooklyn Bridge uh, from an M21 to an M15 zoning district, um, as you can see here. The current, um, the current zoning in the area, M21 zoning district, allows for up to two FAR of commercial and manufacturing use. Uh, the proposed rezoning includes our client site, 50 Old Fulton Street, shown here in the red outline, um, an approximately 6,600 square foot site, improved with a one-story auto body shop. Um, that auto body shop is still operating and their lease runs through the end of this year. And the proposed rezoning also encompasses 60 Old Fulton Street to the east, lot 18 on this map, improved with an auto body shop as well. Um, the rezoning area's current M21 zoning district was put in place in 1961 when Brooklyn's waterfront was largely industrial. Since that time, this area has changed significantly, and it's now largely commercial, and Old Fulton Street really serves as the main pedestrian connection between downtown Brooklyn and Brooklyn Heights and Brooklyn Bridge Park. In addition, the nearby watchtower buildings are being converted to office use, and nearby Dumbo has been transformed into a mixed-use area with retail office and residential uses. And as you can see th by these images, the auto body uses that are really a vestige of this old um, industrial use of the area, just do not mix with the current pedestrian use of the area. There are a lot of cars, a lot of cars that you'll see from these images, and it's hardly pedestrian friendly. Um, also what you see in this area, especially in the left here, you have the, the watchtower buildings, um, and then uh, going through, sorry, you have the, the tall street infrastructure here, the Brooklyn Bridge, the BQE, and in the bottom right there, you see the Eagle Warehouse building as well, another uh, building that's between 88 and 98 feet tall. Um, we worked hard with the Department of City Planning to propose a zoning district that could promote appropriate development here. The proposed M15 zoning district would allow 5FAR of commercial and manufacturing use, which includes office and re local retail uses. It will not allow big box retail or residential uses, and hotels would only be permitted with a special permit. Um, we believe that the building envelope, which uh, would allow five stories, two levels of retail with three levels of office above, uh, permitted by the M15 district, would be consistent with the other buildings in the area, like the Eagle Loft building, the Watchtower buildings, and the surrounding elevated infrastructure of the BQE and the Brooklyn Bridge. We believe that the proposed rezoning will allow for redevelopment of this area for a more co cohesive commercial street frontage stretching between the Brooklyn waterfront and the Brooklyn Bridge Promenade by activating this portion of Old Fulton Street. Anyone approaching Fulton Ferry Landing from the east passing under the BQE overpass currently emer emerges into what should be a welcoming gateway to a bustling commercial neighborhood, and instead they are forced to walk through all the cars that are parked outside of the existing auto body shops. The proposed rezoning would allow uh, redevelopment of the development site with active pedestrian uses in a new building that would, that would fit into its surrounding context while also bringing new office jobs to the neighborhood. According to the projections in our environmental assessment statement and done according to the seeker manual, redevelopment of the two sites in the proposed rezoning area with three floors of office each would create 154 new office jobs. Last week, the City Planning Commission approved this application. However, the community board and borough president did not. We understand that remaining concerns fall mainly into two buckets. The first is um, that the, the Fulton Ferry Historic District, shown here, does extend to the Eagle Warehouse Building, two buildings west of the development site. Um, LPC excluded the, the proposed rezoning area and adjacent building from the Historic District when it was created in 1977. As part of our application, the Landmarks Preservation Commission was notified of the proposed rezoning and reviewed portions of our environmental assessment statement, and we worked with them on a restrictive declaration for a neighboring property for archaeological um, reasons. And they have taken no action to include these sites in the proposed or in the existing historic district. However, we recognize the development site will be viewed in the context of the surrounding historic district, and we have brought on a new architect since the time that we were at the Community Board and Borough President, um, Fogarty Finger Architects, 
Um, and Chris Fogarty is here and will tell you more about his redesign of the building in just a minute. I'd also like to touch on the community's concerns regarding construction of the BQE. We understand that this is a pressing issue and we too would like to see a definitive plan for the BQE's reconstruction. As I'm sure you're aware, at the end of January, the mayor signed an executive order based on his, his expert panel's conclusion that immediate repairs are needed to the existing BQE infrastructure and there is no time to plan for a rerouting of the BQE. Instead, they recommended that these repairs be done and the 20-mile BQE corridor be looked at holistically. 50 Old Fulton Street is located more than 100 feet from the BQE, and we believe that there's plenty of public space between the site and the BQE infrastructure for staging for the immediate repairs that need to be done. In addition, nothing currently prohibits these sites from be being redeveloped, and we do not believe that a rezoning would change, would change their effect or would have any effect on the the reconstruction of the BQE or the repairs to the BQE. Looking at the 20 mile corridor holistically could take years and we do not believe that development should be frozen during this time. In addition, in 2010, the New York State Department of Transportation as part of the downtown Brooklyn BQE environmental impact statement studied a reconfiguration of the BQE that would steer the highway through the proposed rezoning area and consequently portions of Dumbo. According to the findings in the EIS, this alignment would not be feasible or desirable as it required too high a degree of acquisition of private property, and therefore the alignment was withdrawn from further study. Finally, I'd like to say that we have had community outreach with regard to a possible give back to the local community. Between our, borough, between our community board and borough president's hearings, we spoke with representatives of the Dumbo Action Committee and the Fulton Ferry Landing Association. One suggestion to which we remain amenable would be to replant trees as needed and maintain two medians on Old Fulton Street adjacent to the proposed rezoning area. Another is to support lobbying efforts to add a, sec add a second stair to the York Street subway station or with regard to the future plan for the BQE. Unfortunately, after the borough president published his recommendation, the Fulton Ferry Landing Association stated that they were not interested in continuing conversations with us regarding this application and we have not heard back from the Dumbo Action Committee. However, we remain open to continuing these conversations with or with any other local community organizations. As you heard, my client is very excited about uh, this rezoning and the opportunity to develop this property. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Chris Fogarty of Fogarty Finger to tell you more about the building itself. Hello, my name is Chris Fogarty. I am the director at Fogarty Finger Architects. We, we are doing a number of uh, office and residential buildings in Brooklyn. We're just finishing the uh, Dime Bank building, which is over in uh, Williamsburg at the foot of the Williamsburg Bridge. Um, we're about to start a big office building in downtown Brooklyn on Willoughby Square. Um, this is an exciting uh, site. Uh, we took a step back and looked at previous schemes for the site and felt that what we needed was something a little bit more uh, that related to the uh, warehouse uh, look of Dumbo um, and looking at some of these uh, buildings on uh, Washington Street here and uh, red brick and a kind of regular grid of windows and black metal and how could we reinterpret that using uh, a, say a, a more an old material like terracotta and if we look at the next slide. So this is our design for the building. It's a terracotta facade that's slatted that allows a sort of modern office retail building behind. It has a black metal uh, base for storefronts. The storefronts uh, could be divided into three or, or two or one uh, retail units. Um, the office entrance is uh, closest to the, uh, is to to the east, and uh, we think this is a very elegant proportion building and uh, ties nicely into the same height as the Eagle Warehouse without um, being uh, a sort of faux pastiche of, uh, uh, of um, traditional architecture. Um, so we're very excited by this project, and uh, it's a great, great suited site for commercial office space. The floor plates are very uh, regular and nice, and, and this, this boutique office market has really improved, especially all around this area and, and the clock tower building. Thank you. We're happy to answer any questions. Great. Thank you. Just Let's go back. I could you discuss the rationale uh, behind the geography of the proposed uh, rezoning area? Uh, for example, 
it included the BQE uh, and beyond that to the south and the uh, Poplar uh, Street Community Gardens. What, what, what are the practical uh, effects to rezoning these areas? So those areas would not be affected by what you see on the map. The reason it's drawn this way is that city planning likes to keep their maps as neat as possible and they do that by drawing rezoning boundaries to the middle of streets. And so here where you have this, this strange street grid with so many streets intersecting, the practical rezoning is really um, what's on the block, but you wind up with this big swatch of rezoning area because you're going to the middle of so many different streets. And we would be happy to work with you in city planning to alter that um, if it would make people more comfortable. Also, uh, streets do not generate floor areas, so there, there's, and neither do public parks. So there's no, there's, no, there's, the M15 zoning has no impact on those areas. Great. Um, and do you know of any pending um, redevelopment plans for the property uh, immediately to the east? We've spoken with them and they have no plans right now. Great. Okay. I'm going to turn it over to Council Member uh, Levin for some questions. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you very much for this presentation. Um, uh, I want to ask a little bit, what led you to pursue the rezoning application as opposed to considering um, uh, doing a, a development under the current M21 zoning? Um, did you, do you have a scenario in which that was the case and uh, why did you decide that that was not appropriate? So we felt that there was a good opportunity for office here in addition to retail, given everything that's going on in the surrounding area. We are right across uh, the Brooklyn Bridge from Dumbo, which has become a big office community, as well as what you have going on in the Watchtower buildings behind us and then over in downtown Brooklyn. And we felt that this would give the opportunity to really tie all of that together. And, that, and under the uh, M21, that's not possible because under the M21, it's just, um, it's because of the, le there's less floor area, it wouldn't be, you wouldn't result in a feasible office space. Um, given the size of this site, even for boutique offices, we, we were looking at full floor plates, and to do full floor plates under the current zoning, it would result in only two floors. Mm -hmm. um, so you mean that that's the entire lot size, it's because it, it, it yeah. You have a two FAR and the M and M two one. Is that right? Yes. Um, and there's no community facility bonus or any kind of bonus that goes along with the M two one. With M two one, no. Sorry. No, the M two one doesn't allow for community facility. Um, the road president's report recommended delaying the application until the Fulton Ferry Landing Historic District is expanded to include the property. Um, have you considered the relationship of your proposed building to the adjacent historic district? Um, and do you, expand, do you support the expansion or extension of the historic district to include that property? Uh, we, when we looked at the building and redesigned it, we took that on board. I think we would end up probably with a very similar building that we're designing now if it was in a historic district or not. Um, the, the, the landmarks themselves would not have an opinion about the height or they would just be concerned about how the building looked, not mm -hmm. its use. So I don't think that would uh, make any difference and I think we would probably approach the building in the same way. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of the BQE um, triple cantilever repair reconstruction work, um, I mean it is obviously a concern um, because this is a, um, uh, this is a developing scenario, um, we uh, will have some short-term mitigation measures in place, but I think that there's a broad consensus that um, there needs to be a longer-term solution. And uh, what we've heard from the community is a concern that, um, that, uh, that any development here would potentially impede um, work that may need to be done as part of that repair, or if the city were to uh, need to acquire the property through eminent domain to uh, uh, be part of that uh, repair or reconstruction, um, then um, 
you know, the exercise of, of rezoning might not have been a, a, appropriate at the time because um, uh, it would be eventually preempted by uh, city or state action in terms of, of um, acquisition of the property. Um, have you looked into that and considered that and how you think that that uh, uh, would or could potentially impact your site? Sure. We've, we've spent a lot of time looking into the different scenarios that were being proposed for the BQE and ones that have been pr proposed in the past. Um, from what we could tell, the scenarios that have been out there, and especially this one that was rejected back in 2010, what we see is that it would not be desirable for the BQE to go through this site because it wouldn't mean just going through this site in order to navigate this area, especially with the Brooklyn Bridge right there. What you would see is that the BQE would curve through Dumbo, and so then you have a ton of takings and it's just not a desirable solution with the criteria that the state had previously been working under and we assume that they still would not be looking to put the BQE right through the center of Dumbo as well. Um, we understand that there are a lot of what ifs but we think that we have the opportunity to bring a, a beautiful building and a great amenity to this area now and we, we understand that there is some risk however we, we believe that risk is low. Um, what kind of tenants do you envision having at this site? Uh, the tenants would be um, small office um, uh, tenants like uh, architects, um, um, engineering firms. Um, we have, there's, there's a, there's a, there is a need for this type of office instead of taking uh, huge spaces in, in Manhattan, being in Brooklyn and in a great area that is, a, that is nice and it's historical, people like that. It's, so we hope that uh, we could tap into that. And you're, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the proposed, um, the proposal is to an M15, correct? Yes. Um, so an M15's full density build out is, what is that? Five FAR of commercial. Five FAR. So you go from a two to a five. There's nothing in between a two and a five. Is There's that right? There's nothing in between. Well, not in manufacturing districts. No. Oh, so, sorry, can, sorry. Thanks. Sorry. No, no, M districts go one, two, or five. Those are the options, or ten. Right. Except in if if a uh, uh, owner were to um, you know enter into a restrictive declaration of some kind uh, to limit the FAR below what's um, allowed by by zoning, is that correct? I, I, yes, you could do restricted that. Sure. Um, now, is there any uh, in in uh, intent to to have light manufacturing of any kind? Um, you know, with with five FAR, that's that's a lot of um, that's a lot of floor area, um, and um, presumably some of that uh, could be useful to um, light manufacturers that are not necessarily able to pay a full um, uh, the full market rent for office space in a place like Fulton Ferry Landing or Dumbo. For example, if you look at um, the IBZ special permit in uh, in Williamsburg Greenpoint, um, that at this point we've approved several of those special permit applications. Um, there's a set aside in uh, a four four point eight, I believe, that uh, point eight of that is is set aside for um, light manufacturing. It isn't something that we've looked at, but we can look at it. Mm -hmm. um, and then can you speak a little bit about sustainability and resiliency measures um, as part of this application? Sustainability. Yeah. And, and resiliency. Oh. Yes, so, uh, we uh, have reviewed, I mean, one of the nice things is city Council has made it almost uh, impossible for us not to do green roofs and That's solar, good. and so that uh, by default becomes the uh, water retention on the roof, um, minimizing water runoff onto the sidewalk. Uh, we're certainly excited at looking at how we can uh, work with all of those uh, different measures that are out there. Um, and and I, I can't remember where we left it, but we certainly have been working with the engineers to make sure that we minimize all water runoff. And, and, and activate the roof as well, which is a great location for roof activation. Um, and what about um, uh, uh, net zero measures of any kind? 
Um, um, again, so the city is kind of leading the way there, so we are happily um, following those, those criteria. We would do a zone green building um, and be uh, taking advantage of the zoning to allow us to uh, increase the efficiency of the building envelope and again running all the systems uh, looking forward to how they're going to be needed to be done in, over the next 10 or 15 years anyway to meet the city, city's uh, direction. Okay, thank you so much for the answers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony today. I'd like to now call up the next uh, panel, Laura uh, Pinback. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. State your name and then you can. Okay, Laura Bernbach. Thank you. Okay, good morning. My name is Laura Bernbach and I'm representing the Coalition for the BQE Transformation, which is a group of 12 neighborhood organizations united for a transformative and comprehensive plan for the entire BQE corridor. Our coalition has been urging the city council to reject this rezoning application since the issue first arose last year. As we heard already, CB2 agreed with our position and voted to disapprove on December 11th, 2019, followed by the Brooklyn Borough President's Office also rejecting this proposal with conditions in late January. So our main objections are as follows. The developer has a right, of course, to develop within the current zoning, and no one is calling for that right to be taken away. While a rezoning may be appropriate at some future point, we believe that this is absolutely the wrong time to allow it. Why? There's a very strong possibility that this area will be needed either temporarily or permanently in a pending reconstruction of the BQE. Approving a change to zoning for these parcels prior to adoption and approval of any comprehensive plan for the BQE is imprudent at best. The proposed rezoning area as included in the application is a much larger area than just the lots at 50 and 60 Old Fulton Streets, and as we just heard, includes a small triangular median at the intersection of Hicks and Old Fulton Street, as well as a portion of the BQE elevated entrance ramp. The administration should hold off on approving any change to the area's zoning until the full scope of the BQE reconstruction is decided, including any on or off ramps, parks, or other structures which may encroach upon or near the surrounding properties. We heard the applicant refer to a, a 2010 study. 2010 was a long time ago now, and a lot has changed in the thinking around the BQE and the potential uh, rerouting, or we heard a tunnel from the city council. There have been a lot of proposals that have come forward since 2010, so I don't really think that it's that relevant to refer to a study which is so old. Furthermore, while we understand that the New York City Department of Transportation would retain the right to invoke eminent domain, where is the logic in pushing things to that point? Council Member Levin, as you yourself have noted, any rezoning that resulted in an increase in the value of the property would mean the city would end up paying much more if it were to need to acquire the site. And finally, we understand uh, the likely probability that the developer could sell the property once the property is rezoned, meaning that there is no guarantee that the developer seeking the rezoning today will be the final developer of the property. This puts motive and benefit to the community into question. Both the Mayor's Expert Panel and the City Council Arab Report called for the Atlantic to Sands section of the BQE to be included as part of a corridor-wide comprehensive plan. We should not be taking any actions at this point that would potentially restrict or put unnecessary obstacles in the way of that process. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony. Call up the next panel, um, Adam uh, Westrick, Candice Clemens, and Amanda Van uh, Doreen. Did I say it right, Doreen? Okay. Hi, my name is Amanda Van Doren. Um, I've lived in the Dumbo area for over eight years. And um, 
I lived very near the uh, 50 Old Fulton. In fact, I lived on Washington Street. So I have spent a lot of time in that area with my kids. And um, it has definitely been a hard place to navigate the sidewalks and even when you're driving um, because of uh, Sam's Auto Body Shop. Um, Sam's Body Shop is an amazing body shop. I have to let you know if you ever are in an accident. He is the best. He is absolutely fantastic. I will follow him wherever he goes. But um, I definitely think it would be a huge improvement to the community to be able to have um, a small business building and up in that area. And I'm really glad to see that somebody would be investing in that and making that happen. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention was um, Thomas Lieberman, and I live in his building, one of his buildings, and he um, is someone who really does care about the community. Um, the diversity in his building and the people in his building and the way he has taken care of his buildings and made them fit within the community are um, pretty impressive. I've also found him and his wife one Sunday gardening and putting flowers outside for all of us to enjoy. And to me, that kind of means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Candace Clements, and um, I'm also a resident, um, and I live in one of uh, Mr. Lieberman's buildings. Uh, first, I can say that um, being new to New York eight years ago, I lived in Vinegar Hill and I walked past this building every day, looking through the windows and like, this is not a typical new development. It was something that was exciting. You could see the stairs going down um, and just not a cookie cutter building inside. Finally, five, five years in the building as a new parent, um, Mr. Lieberman has um, shown me how much of community he he values um, to his wife planting flowers but not only that I was expecting a child and we had a room built for my daughter and we hang out with our neighbors on the roof we have cookouts we do movie nights um, so Mr. Lieber Lieberman is big on community and um, I can definitely say he's a man of his word um, as far as how he takes care of his building uh, one of our neighbors in Vinegar Hill told us that our current building that we live in now used to be a uh, chocolate factory so we can hear all these great stories about our neighborhood but you can see the brick walls the exposed brick walls that Mr. Lieberman left in the building and you still get a presence of like oh my god this building is old there's something special about it just being in the building and you know coming new developers are putting 600 square feet for a two-bedroom apartment in our neighborhood versus them we have almost double that and just being in um, in that t neighborhood and understanding that Mr. Lieberman is respectful of family, he's respectful of community and um, keeping certain values and things in the neighborhood that um, should stay alive. So uh, he's definitely a man of his word, but um, he's done, done a phenomenal job at um, respecting what our neighbors want and um, just being an excellent part of the community. Thank you. Hi, my name is Adam Westry. I'm going to be reading a letter uh, drafted by Daryl Barlow, the CEO of Tillery Park Foundation, who could not be here. My name is Daryl Barlow. I'm the current president and CEO of the Tillery Park Foundation, and I have been working for the past 28 years at the Long Island Brooklyn campus. I am a community activist, having been involved with the Community Board 11 Parks Committee. I was instrumental in renovating McLaughlin Park. The Vinegar Hill and Dumbo area is my neighborhood. I visit Old Fulton Street with my parent and godchild quite frequently. I am happy to see that the developer wants to turn 50 Old Fulton Street into an attractive commercial building. There is a great deal of pedestrian traffic here, and the first thing that they see is a parking lot of cars to be repaired. For too long, these two old body shops have been an eyesore and a disgrace for this historical neighborhood. I, hope, I sincerely hope the commission approves the application. Thank you, Daryl Barlow. Great. Thank you all for coming today and for your testimony. Um, are there, are there any other members of the public who wish to testify? Uh, seeing none, I now close the public hearing on this application and it will be laid over. 
Uh, we will now hear a pre-considered LU item for the 364 Avenue of the Americas rezoning proposal under uh, ULURP number C200149 ZMM relating to property in Council Member Chin's district in Manhattan. The applicant seeks approval of a rezoning map amendment to change an existing C15 district to a C25 district in order to propose, uh, to, in order to pursue a BSA special permit for a physical cultural uh, culture establishment or uh, PCE within the existing building. The proposed rezoning area is in the block front of 6th Avenue between Washington Place and Waverly Place uh, and includes two other properties fronting on the side streets which are not controlled by the applicant and which would include existing mixed use buildings. Uh, I now open the public hearing on this application and we'll call up uh, Richard Lobel. Please state your name for the record and raise your right hand. Do you Richard Lobel, Sheldon Lobel. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and that you will answer all questions truthfully? I do. Thank you. Chair Moya, council members, thank you for your time this morning. Once again, Richard Lobel from Sheldon Lobel, PC, for the 364 Avenue of the Americas rezoning. Uh, as you can see from the circled area on the map, this rezoning is located on a portion of uh, Sixth Avenue, which is very dense and which is lined with commercial overlays, more specifically C15 overlays in the immediate area of the property. Uh, the proposal right now would be to convert this to a C25 overlay. This is reminiscent of other rezonings we've done where we've gone from a C1 to a C2, as is the case here, primarily to allow for the use as a physical culture establishment or gym or health club. Um, particularly at the site here, there was a, uh, a facility that was opened as a beauty parlor, a valid use group six under the current zoning. But in the event that licensed masseuses are requested at the site, uh, you're unable to do that unless you have a special permit from BSA. And that special permit is unavailable in uh, the C1 district and is only available for properties within C2. So similar to uh, the 180 Avenue of the Americas rezoning, which was uh, approved by the council in or around uh, December 2018, this would allow us to locate a PCE at the site. Um, you can see from the zoning change map, this is a relatively uh, minor rezoning. Again, we're seeking a C25 in the area and the dotted uh, lines to the right. Uh, we also notice that there's a C4 district immediately north of Waverly Place at this location. A C4 district permits more intense commercial uses, um, so the C2 itself is relatively close to a C1, permits some additional use groups, primarily the PCE and some things around home improvement and repair. Some pictures of the site, we have an existing five-story building with ground floor commercial. Um, given the commercial activity in the area and given the fact that the um, area wants to see this as a productive site, we got a unanimous vote from Community Board 2 Manhattan, 38 and nothing. Um, Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer was also in favor of the application. Um, this is a, a rezoning which is really uh, in consideration of um, allowing our uh, landlords, property owners, to have a broader range of commercial uses to prevent sites from losing tenants and allowing them to exist in a, in a robust manner. As you go up and down 6th Avenue in this area, sadly there are some properties which uh, are, have gone dark and do not have tenants. Um, so here the opportunity to uh, allow this uh, existing tenant to remain is uh, something which is valued by the applicant as well as by the local area. And that's essentially the, the crux of the rezoning. Great. Just quickly, I, I might have missed this, but uh, could you just clarify uh, the impetus behind this application, specifically uh, what services does the facility currently um, provide and does it currently comply with the C1 zoning uh, or is this a legalization uh, and if so, how long has the facility been operating uh, in this way? Sure. So the facility began operating in October 2019 as a beauty parlor under use group six, which is a legitimate use. At some point, they introduced uh, licensed masseuses at this location, thereby making this application one for legalization. Um, so this will be brought to BSA for a special permit. They were issued violations at the site, which will now need to be rectified. Um, sadly, or due to the existing affairs of the city, many of these applications for PCEs, indeed close to half of them, come to BSA as legalizations. The fact is that uh, many of these applicants um, require operating ca capital in order to 
go through this rather lengthy and expensive process. In fact, when we go to the CPC, to the commission with these applications, oftentimes they talk about the fact that they'd like to see this special permit done away with. Um, so here, the uh, commercial use was okay, the masseuses were not, so that's the impetus behind the application. Got it. Um, and what other uses uh, not already allowed under the C1 rule uh, could potentially operate here uh, if the rezoning were, was approved? So we've actually done some work around this because of the relative frequency of these applications. Uh, it's technically use groups 7, 8, 9, and 14, which would additionally be allowed. Um, and so those home improvement stores, um, plumbing repair shops, um, there's certain uh, theaters and other catering facilities that would be permitted pursuant to this use group. Having said that, um, when we do research around this, and for example, if you do look at the properties immediately to the north, uh, those uses really don't take advantage of that more intense commercial zoning. What you end up having really is a lot of these PCEs, gyms, and spas, because those are really the ones that um, are frequently tenanting these spaces. So um, there are marginally additional uses, but I would add that the city itself in many of these current rezonings, uh, I bring up the example of the East Harlem rezoning, they map C2s on the avenues now specifically to give property owners this greater flexibility. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony today. Thank you, Chair. Um, are there any other members of the public who wish to testify? Seeing none, I now close the public hearing on this application and it will be laid over. Uh, before we conclude, I ask the council to restate the vote. A vote of six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Today's items are approved and referred to the full land use committee. Uh, this concludes today's meeting and I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, uh, of course, the council and land use staff for attending. Uh, this meeting is hereby adjourned.